Hello everyone. So General Motors has repurchased my Bolt EV and I'm going to tell you how the process went in just a moment. So GM repurchased my Bolt and it was about almost exactly four weeks that it took for the process to complete. I'm not going to go in too much about why I wanted a repurchase or any of the reasoning. I'm just going to go over the process and how it went for me. So it started out on January the 25th. I called and I made two complaints. The first complaint was a safety complaint about the fire risk. And the second was the redu reduction in range. And I was immediately told that I could get a loaner vehicle and get reimbursed for the fuel from GM. I declined that offer and I requested that they either repurchase the vehicle or replace the battery pack. At that point, the rep took my request for a repurchase, advised it would be sent to a senior rep, and that I would receive a call back within a couple of days. About two days later, I received a call back from the senior rep and she asked for some paperwork, namely my buyer's order for the vehicle when I purchased it and for the financing contract. I sent both of those items back to her right away and she said that she forwarded those items to the person who makes decisions. About four or five days later, I received an email that my request had been approved and that I had two options. I could either do an MSRP to MSRP swap for a 2020 or 2021 Bolt, or I could do the complete repurchase. I chose to do the repurchase and she advised that she had forwarded that information to the person who makes the decisions. Another four or five days went by and I was contacting her each day just to kind of follow up and that kind of thing. Another four or five days went by before I moved any further. Finally, she said that it had been forwarded to the third party company who verifies that they comply with all the consumer protection laws. Later I found out it was actually the, the repurchase division that they were forwarding it to. It took about four or five days for them to call back. Finally they called and the repurchase process got started. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the repurchase process overview. This is available online. I'll put a link in the description so you can access it and look it over. But this is basically how the process goes. It's sent over to the repurchase division. And if they accept it, they make initial con customer contact within 24 hours. Okay, and they verify information and they request a bunch of documents. For me, they requested everything, driver's license, title, registration. I had a loan on the vehicle, so they also requested the lien holder information, the account number, and some other things. This is the part where the process can really get delayed, is if you're slow in getting this information back to them. I was very quick in getting the information back to them. I had it back to them the same day. Okay, so that part of the process went fine for me. They also contact the dealer, and this would be the dealer that you chose as your preferred dealer, who's going to complete the closing process once all this is done. And then here it outlines what the process is based on your situation. If it's a straight repurchase, which is what mine was, 
or if it's a lease repurchase or if you're doing the trade repurchase and it goes on and describes that and then it describes what their process is if they're waiting on the customer or if they're waiting on the dealer to respond and this is where they actually formulate the offer so after the RC has everything they need to formulate the offer they're going to do that and then they send it over to be reviewed now the review can take a couple days to complete after that is done you will get your final offer now once you get the final offer it's all going to be based on the lemon laws in your state so if you want to get some kind of idea of what you would get for a buyback look at the lemon laws in your state they will clearly outline what you're entitled to under the law that's what GM is going to use to formulate your offer your vehicle does not have to meet the criteria to be deemed a lemon they're only using the lemon law to determine how much they're going to give you on the buyback so I'm going to skip ahead here real quick so you're going to get the offer to review and you can either decline it or you can accept it once you accept it the dealer gets a packet sent to them and they will contact you to schedule the closing to complete the process and turn in the vehicle in my case I, it was almost instantaneous that I was turning the documents around and it took four weeks and one day for me to get it all done it's probably going to take anybody who started the process in February or later it's probably going to take you quite a bit longer so let's look at the actual offer and then I'm going to close this video out I don't want this to get too long this is the settlement letter I received obviously I removed all the personally identifiable information get the proper zoom here okay we can see this is a straight settlement letter it's gonna have the VIN it's gonna have the SR number as well as the repurchase case number listed here it's going to have your name and here you can see they are telling me that they're going to repurchase the vehicle and this is the amount they offered me this is based on the Maryland lemon law and so my base price what I paid for the vehicle before taxes and fees was thirty nine thousand dollars I paid three twenty for registration license and title I paid $75 for doc and in Maryland they can subtract up to 15% for vehicle usage they took 15% of 39,000 which is the maximum and they came up with 5850 so they subtracted that off of the offer and that's where I get the 33,545 in your state you may also be entitled to any sales tax and you may also be entitled to any interest paid on a vehicle loan in my case I wasn't entitled to either of those things and then it gives you instructions on what to do you have to sign it and at the bottom will be your repurchase case number here I've of course removed that the second page is just going to have the requirements in order for the vehicle to be accepted back and we'll look at this real quick okay vehicle cannot be damaged if the vehicle's been modified it has to be returned to the original factory condition you must sign a power of attorney form for the title work and you must sign an odometer disclosure statement all factory equipment needs to be intact and functional and there are some requirements for the title the title has to be free and clear if it does not have a lien and cashback rebates and incentives are not applicable to this transaction 
And that's pretty much it. The process went pretty smooth. They were very slow in responding. They were very vague. They did not describe things to me in very much detail at all. They gave me some information enough to keep me going through the process, but did not put my mind at ease with regard to where the process was going. They also didn't tell me that anything had been approved. I only knew that it was definitely approved after the repurchase coordinator contacted me and obviously after I got the written settlement offer. And it's kind of frustrating because, you know, you want to plan to get a different vehicle and you don't want to wait until the last minute and be without a, a transportation. So that was my process. I do applaud GM for buying these vehicles back voluntarily. I think it's the right thing to do. There are reports that GM is trying to do a software fix, which I think is not a good idea. They either need to buy them back or replace the battery packs. There's also a news report that Hyundai is now going to replace the battery packs in all of the Kona EVs that also had the same type of fire recall on them. They're not going to attempt to do a software fix on those. So I think GM has to do the same thing. There's no software fix that's going to work for this and put people's minds at ease. If you're starting this process, in this process, or getting close to the end, I wish you the best of luck with your buyback. Folks, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps other YouTubers find quality content, and we really appreciate it. Click on subscribe, and then click the bell to get notified whenever new content is added. As always, comments, questions, and suggestions are welcome below, and we thank you very much for watching.